OK, uh, so this lab, we are going to learn that how we can create some customized uh, geoprocessing tools that in ArcGIS Pro. So we are we already have learned different type of data analysis tools like for the Rust data set and also for the Vect data set. And actually in ArcGIS Pro, we can also create our own tools that based on those existing S3 tools, or you can even, uh, if you know Python very well, or you can even design your own totally new tools that script tools, and you can bring those tools that into ArcGIS Pro that to help you uh, to facilitate those analysis process. So let's first create an, a project. And so this will be our lab nine. And as always, let's save our project to our uh, to our uh, OneDrive folder on AppStream. And we are also going to create a new folder. So let's put everything in the uh, lab nine folder. So let's on. <coughs> OK, uh, so looks like I already have a lab, lab 9, so I'm going to create a new one. So lab 9 and score 2. OK, so I'm going to just create a new empty folder, and I will save everything to this uh, new folder. So now let's start our uh, project. Um, so we have learned uh, several type of the data analytic tools. So uh, if we go to the data analysis, and if we open this toolbox, OK, so toolbox in the geoprocessing tools. And we can see all the tools that are listed here. So for example, if we, uh, if we open this analysis tools, and we can see the, the tools that we mentioned earlier, and you can see actually there are so many tools. So uh, we cannot cover all the tools. So you can take a look at those tools and see if uh, uh, some may, might be. Uh, you can use those in your fu uh, future projects. Um, however, if we go back to our uh, catalog, and we can also see a toolbox here. So that is Lab 9 toolbox. So this is where we can create our own tools. Um, so if you right click, you can see new. And there are several types of tools. So you can create a model tool um, so that you can just combine multiple existing tools from S3 into a new model tool so that you can customize your anal analytical process. You can also create a script tool. So if you knew Python very well, and you can also create a script tools here. Uh, or you can open this model builder. So that will also bring you a new model tool. So uh, there are two ways. So you can either right click and bring a new model tool, or you can just click, um, click this model builder here. Uh, so before we start, building the tools. So let's download the data. So let's download some demo data. Uh, so let's go to our portal and let's search mass shooting 2019. And you can see mass shooting 2019. I am the owner. So let's bring that one. Uh, let's also download the population data. So if we go to the uh, living atlas and if we search population state and we can see in the second one ACS population variables boundary so we are also going to use that one uh, so we use those data set in our um, lab 7 for the vector data analysis so we are going to use those data again so let's also export those data to our local geo database so let's right click the mass routine Go to data and also export features. <clears throat> and let's export to our um, a local geo database and let's call it mass and skull shooting. And for the environment, uh, because mass shooting 
uh, data set does not have a PCS. So we created this one by geocoding. So it only has GCS. So let's also define a PCS. And here, let's say we want to use the same PCS as the state. OK, so that is the state population. So state population and also county population has PCS. So let's use the same PCS. OK, and let's run this export. So we are going to use a uh, mass shooting and also the state population and also county population as demo data so that for our uh, customized geoprocessing tool. OK, so now uh, the export is complete. So if we go to our uh, geo database and we can see mass routine is not exported. Uh, so let's export the population state at the state level as well. So let's go to export features. And we are doing the same thing. So we call this one POP state. For the fields, uh, so let's keep everything that above total population. So let's click uh, the field that beneath total population and go to the bottom and hold the shift key. OK, so make sure we, uh, we select everything that beneath total population and we click remove. OK, and we still have three more fields need to be removed. OK, so we keep everything and make sure we also make sure we keep the total population and we export to our local geo database. So let's run it. OK, so the total population has been exported and so let's export the county population as well. So right click the county population data and also export features. And let's call it POP County. And we are doing the same thing. So we are going to keep everything that uh, ex including the total population, but we are going to uh, exclude everything beneath total population. So let's select that and also hold the shift key. OK. So that everything that beneath total population and uh, let's say remove. Let's also remove the ship plans. So we keep everything until the total population. And let's run it. OK, uh, so now we have all the data that are ready. So we have mass shooting, POP county, and also POP state. Uh, so let's remove the data that downloaded from uh, ArcGIS Online. So remove the mass shooting and also uh, the population that are downloaded from ArcGIS Online. And also, don't forget to save the project. OK, uh, so now we have the data ready. So let's start create our um, tools. So let's open the model builder. Uh, so now we are in this uh, model builder design view. And if we click the properties, uh, you can give it a name. So let's call it lab nine tool. And let's also give the label. Let's call it lab nine tool. OK, and click OK and save it. So now you can see in the toolbox, uh, we now have this lab nine tool. Uh, so within the toolbox uh, design view, uh, you can uh, insert the new tool, the, the existing ArcGIS S3 tools, so that you can customize the process where you can combine multiple tools together. Uh, you can also insert standalone variable. Uh, you can also do the iterations, uh, so like create a for loop or while loop, or you can iterate all the features, all the files from a specific uh, folder or data container. And there are also some tools that are uh, used for the model build tool only, so like calculate values, parser, paths, etc. Uh, you can also define the logic so that can make your uh, model build tools uh, more complicated. So let's say here we are going to create a very simple one. So we are going to create buffers. Uh, so let's drag the mass shooting 
as uh, testing data. So let's drag mass shooting. And let's say we search the buffer tool. So buffer. And let's let's click, double click the buffer. So now you can see the tool is now loaded into this uh, model builder design view. Um, the buffer is a tool which has an output. Uh, so what we can do is that we can just left click the uh, left click the mass shooting data set and you all see this arrow and next you will connect that one to the buffer tool uh, so now you can see we can use the, the mass shooting data set as input feature as the extent or as, as a precondition so let's say we want that one as input feature okay so now this buffer tool has an input feature which is which is a mass shooting However, we still need to define the other parameters. So let's say we uh, double click this buffer. So you can see here the distance is required. So let's say we want to create a buffer that is 50 kilometers. OK, and we click OK. And now you can see for the output. So that is a it called buffer. A mass shooting buffer and if you double click uh, you can also specify that where do you want to save it so right now it will be saved to our uh, geo database which is fine and let's validate and we don't have any errors and now we can start to run this tool so let's see we can either run it here or we can save the tool and we can run this tools like a normal tool uh, from uh, as other analysis tool so let's run it here. So now you can see we are executing the buffer analysis. And now you can see it's done. And if we refresh our geo database, and you can see the buffer has been created. And you can drag that one to the map and to visual. Uh, to visually display those buffers. Uh, however, uh, we are not going to do that. So let's remove this buffer for now. So delete. Okay. Uh, so if you want, if you want to run this tool as a standalone tool, like here. So what we can do is that we can double click this tool, and you can see here you can only run it just as we run it here. So it will create another buffer. It does not have any parameters. Okay, so that is because for this model tool, we didn't specify any parameters. So if you want to say allow user to define the input and also define the output or even customize the distance, uh, we can do that. So for example, for the input, you can just right click and you can make this data set as a parameter. So making that as a parameter means that the user can bring the other data set, not only the mass shooting, so they can bring any other data set they like. And this, it's similar for the output. So we can set the output as a parameter as well. OK, uh, we can also set the distance as a parameter. So first, let's right click the buffer tool and we let's create a variable uh, from the parameter so let's say the distance okay and let's set the distance as a parameter as well and now let's save it okay validate save it and now if we go back to our toolbox if we double click this lab 9 tool OK, now we can say we can define those parameters. So the default is always mass shooting. The default output is mass shooting buffer. And the default distance is 50 um, kilometers. However, you are able to choose different output. And you are able to, to specify or choose different input and also choose specified output. Uh, you can also change uh, uh, the values for the distance parameters. OK, so that will make the, the, the tool to be more genetic so that the user can use that tool to apply for different data set. OK, 
So that is a very simple um, buffer tools. However, so we already have these buffer tools. So um, they are kind of no uh, uh, contribution <laughs> reason that why we want to create a new buffer tool since we already have a buffer tool. So the real um, power of this uh, model build tools is that you can combine multiple tools together, multiple existing tools together, and you can customize your analysis so that uh, once you have the customized analysis, next time if you want to run the same process, you can just click your tool that you created and you can bring different data and also you don't need to run multiple times. So you don't need to go through a lot of other different separate tools. So let's see here, let's see that uh, we want to create buffers for each mass routines. And we want to count that what is the average population around each mass shooting instance. So we want we will create a buffer and we will use a buffer to intersect with the county population. And next we will summarize the intersected uh, feature based on so we will calculate the average population for each single buffer so that we all know that uh, within each buffer what is average population. And finally, we will join the table, so the, 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 the summarized table, back to the buffer so that probably we can create visualizations. OK, so that is uh, 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 the procedure that we are going to uh, complete. And that actually is the lab seven. So we're going to repeat lab seven, but we are using we are going to use a, a customized tools. So let's say next, let's bring the intersect. So we are going to double click. So we are going to use the output of the buffer as input for the intersect. So let's connect those two together and use the buffer as input feature and let's also drag the county okay and we put the county as also as input feature and for this intersect we don't need to specify any other we don't need to change other parameters so everything is great because it's simply intersect and next we are going to summarize so we are going to perform a summary statistics where the output of the intersect will be the input table of this summary statistics. And next, if we double click the summary statistics, so the output table will be the mass routine bar for intersect one. And we're going to statistics, we're going to calculate uh, calculate the average population, so average total population. So total population we're going to calculate the average. And the case field, so we want to calculate average for each single buffer. So here for the buffer, we have the FID of the buffer. So FID and score mass routine buffer. OK, and that's OK. So now we have this uh, statistic, so summarize statistic table. We want to join this one back to the buffer. So the next tool we are going to use is called join. OK, join field. And we can actually uh, just double click the join field. So we want to see the input table. OK, input table will be the mass routine buffer. That is this one. And input field will be the, sorry, the input table should be the buffer, sorry, should be the buffer. Okay, so should be the mass shooting buffer. So that is this. So we're drawing this table to this um, buffer. So the input should be the mass shooting buffer. And input join field will be the object ID. So object ID will be at, is equivalent to the FID on this uh, table. 
So the join table will be the maturity buffer statistics. Um, and we're going to use this FID as this output join. OK, and let's click OK. All right. Uh, now let's say we want to auto layout and also auto fit window so that can make this process easier uh, to understand and also we validate and looks like everything is right. OK, so let's say we create buffer for mass shooting. We intersect the buffer with county and we calculate the average population per buffer and we join that uh, statistics so the average population per buffer back to buffer okay so let's save it and let's run it so now you can see we have uh, four steps the first step is creating those buffers and now the second step is intersect okay so intersect buffer with the county population Okay, uh, so now ArcGIS Pro has been running slowly, so I don't know why, but uh, recently ArcGIS Pro has been extremely slow, so uh, we had to be uh, patient. So now it is uh, executing the summary statistics. Uh, you can see that for the intersect, it took uh, more than 16 minutes. So yeah, so we had to be very patient for ArcGIS Pro. OK, so now it is the final step that is drawing uh, the summarized table back to the buffer. OK, and now you can see it's done. Um, so let's close this tool and let's go back to our catalog. And if we refresh, uh, we all see the result that's been created. Uh, so let's say first, let's, we, let's uh, bring the buffer. So that is our first step that uh, we created buffers around those mass routing points. OK, we created those buffers around those mass routing points. Secondly, we intersect the buffer with uh, the county population. OK, uh, so we intersect the buffer with the county population so that for each single part uh, the intersected result has the county population and also the buffer ID. Finally, next, we created a summary statistics so that uh, for all the fields that have same buffer FIDs, what is the average population? So if we open this table, and we will see that for for each single FID of buffers, so for each single buffer, so what is the average population? And finally, we join this one um, back to this buffer. So now if we open the attribute, um, we will see that for each single buffer and also for actually for each single uh, instant, what is the average uh, population? So that is the entire process that we what we have done in this um, uh, customized tool. So let's save this one. So now if we uh, run this one again, so it will repeat all those process so that you don't need to run those four tools separately. So you just need to click one time and and it will do everything automatically for you. So that is a nice Thing that for the model tools. However, so we can also further uh, polish our tool that we can allow user to choose, say, uh, bring different points as input data. And also we can also bring different polygons, or uh, even polylines, um, or even points that as the summary data. Uh, we can also allow users to choose what field they want to make a statistics and also join the statistic table, the aggregated table, back to the buffer. So we can further polish our tool so that we can make the tool is more like a genetic tool. 
Okay, uh, so the tool will much look like uh, similar to this summarize nearby function. So, but however, the only difference is that summarize nearby is not free, so it will cost extra credits. But the tool that we created here will have the similar functions. However, it is free. Okay, so that will be super nice. Okay, uh, so before we start, uh, let's first delete those um, feature classes that are created from the previous um, uh, that when we run in the tool. So let's delete all those buffers, intersect, and also tables. Okay, so let's delete the intersected one. And let's also delete the table. Okay, uh, so to make this one more genetic, let's first think about like what are the parameters that we should set. Uh, so we bring two data set into this tool. So one is the mass shooting. So we already make that one as a parameter. The second one is um, the population county. So we can also allow user to use different data set. So something like po uh, population county. So let's make this one as a parameter. And also the user should be able to specify the output. So in this case, our ultimate output is mass shooting buffer. OK, so let's make that one as parameter, which already is. And for this one, class output feature class, uh, mass shooting buffer intersect, and also this one. So those are the uh, intermediate features so that um, Ideally, those should be deleted every time that when we execute this tool. OK, uh, you can also make those as an uh, intermediate data set, or you can keep those features every time. So that is up to you. So you can set those. You can make those changes. But we just want user to specify the input and also output. And, last, and next, let's think about what parameters we, the user need to change. So for the buffer, we already allow user to change the distance. Um, there's nothing we need to change for the intersect. In this summary statistics, so if we double click, and we can see that we actually specified the statistic field and also the kids field. Um, so let's make those two as variables first. So make variables. The first one is a statistic field. And the second one is the case field. OK. So the statistic field will allow user to say, OK, so based on um, uh, which field and what type of statistic are you going to make? Uh, so let's make that one as a parameter. Uh, for the case field, it should always be FID and score and also this output feature name. Okay, so it should not be the it will not be the it will not always be the mass shooting buffer because the user may define different output names. So we want to change this one along with whatever user defined here. And for the join field, okay, so there are two variables. Okay, so let's first open the join field. Okay, so let's double click. For the join field, we need to specify the object ID the join table is always uh, from the previous um, output of the previous tools and also output join field. So those are the two variables that user need to set up. OK, so let's make variables from those two uh, parameters. So that is input field. And the next is the output join field. OK, uh, so for the input field, uh, the, the right now the value is object ID, which is fine because we will want to join this table 
um, uh, to this one. So the buffer always have an object ID. Uh, for this output field, so that is where we have the problem. So for this output field, uh, it is will be FID and score and also whatever that user defined for this output. Okay, so we need to gather the name of this output and we need to pass the name to this output field uh, parameter. Okay, uh, so now we have all the uh, variables and also parameters that have been set out. Um, as I said, we need to pass a name of this one uh, to the case field and also to the output uh, join field. Uh, so in the model builder, we, what we can use is that we can use this utilities where we can use a parser tool. So the parser tool will pass input into the files Pass name and also extension, so that the output can be used in those inline variables such as the case field and also output join field. Okay, so that is what we exact what we want. So let's click that one, and let's connect the mass shooting to this parser field as input value. So now the pass. Okay, so if you double click. The path will be where we define here. Okay, so in this case, it is uh, uh, lab9.geodatabase. The name will be the table that what we define here. Okay, so name variables will contain the value of the table. And also, we also have the extension and also the namespace. Okay, so now the next is that we're going to pass the value of the name to this case field, we are also going to pass a value of the name variable to this output field. So let's double click the case field. And in ArcGIS Pro, so the, the syntax to pass that one is, called, is using percentage symbol. So we use, we still want the FID and score and we type percentage and the, the variable name, which is name. Okay, percentage name. So that will have what have, so in this case right now it's mass routing buffer, so that it will be FID and skull mass routing buffer. So if user give it different output, so it will be the output that user defined. It will be replaced will be used to replace percentage name. Okay. And let's do the same thing for this output join field. Okay, so again, this will be percentage name. Okay, so FID and score percentage name. Okay, nice. Uh, so let's auto layout. Let's save it. Okay, here we have a second issue. So now, once we create buffer, so ArcGIS will execute parser pass. We we'll also execute intersect. We want ArcGIS Pro to execute parser pass first. Otherwise, when ArcGIS is doing the summary statistics or doing the drawing field, it will not have the value of the name. Okay, so we want the parser pass be executed first, at least before the summary statistics and also drawing field. So to do that, we can set the name as precondition of the summary statistics. So let's click name and connect to summary statistics. And here we see that name will be the precondition. And we do the same thing. The name will also be the precondition of the drawing field. Okay. So that will be the logic, the, the process. So we will run the parser name, uh, parser uh, pass first, and next it will run intersect summary statistics and also drawing field. And the name of the output will be uh, used in this keys field and also in, used in this output join field. Okay, so that's pretty nice. 
Uh, so now if we save our tool and if we open this toolbox and we can see the parameters are there. Um, okay, we can see mass shooting, mass shooting, um, buffers, distance. Uh, this will be the uh, county population and also which field we want to join. Okay, so uh, so we want to make this tool to be more user friendly. So for example, we want to give the labels like input feature, buffer distance, output feature, etc. Uh, we also want to provide some help information. So for example, here if not, if I put mouse uh, on this question mark, so it has nothing there. And if I click the mass routines, it also has nothing here. So it just means it is required, but if someone that are not familiar with your project, they will not be able to use your tool because it will not make sense to them. So let's add more uh, customized, let's polish actually, let's polish our tools further. So let's say, make this tool to be easy and stand, to be easier to understand. So let's say first, let's change those labels. So. For this one, let's rename this one. So let's call it input feature. And let's also double click this input feature. So let's delete those default values. Okay. Because if you have default values and if you're running the tool on different computer, you may not have those default values. So that will give errors. Okay. So let's delete, clear those default values. Now you can see everything become gray because we don't have any valid inputs and that's fine. So, and for this math routine, let's rename this one to be output. And let's double click to make sure that we clear the default values. Okay, it has been cleared, that's nice. Uh, for this one, so let's also rename this one as, let's call it summary feature. And let's also double click uh, to clear those default values. Okay, um, for this one, so let's also rename this one. And also let's double click. Okay, uh, so let's say we want to call this one to be, we want to save this one to be uh, percentage name and score intersect. Okay, so just in case the user want to skip those uh, intersected result, so we, it will be saved as name, whatever you define here, they define here, and score intersect. Okay, and for this uh, statistic field, oops, sorry, uh, for this output, so let's uh, rename it. summarize table and and also let's change the default value so let's call it percentage name and score summary so if user want keep that one so it will be and score user summary and for this one actually we uh Let's also change that label. So let's call it joint buffer. And for the value, I don't believe we need to change that one. So because uh, it will be the same value as the output because it will join back to this buffer. So we don't need to change that one. Okay, uh, next, let's also clear the uh, the other parameters that those are the variables for each 
uh, analytics. So let's say for the buffer. Uh, so let's clear the distance. Okay. So user can define any distance they like. Uh, so we clear the default values. And for the statistic field, okay, uh, we also clear those default values. Uh, for the case field, we will keep that one. So FID and score percentage name. So this is not a tool parameter. So it will always be the FID of this uh, buffer. So let's keep that one. Uh, for the join field, input join field, so that will always be the object ID. So that is true. So let's keep that. And for this output join field, and that will also always be the FID and score percentage name. So that is also correct. So let's keep that one. Okay, uh, so let's auto layout, fit to view. And let's validate one more time. Looks like everything's okay. So let's save it. Okay, uh, so now we have a genetic tool. Next, let's add some mentor data. So remember that mentor data is a data about data. And actually, uh, for the tool, we can also add it to the mental data. So it is essentially like uh, some help information about the tool. So let's add it to mental data. Here we need to give some tags. So let's say date analysis. And then here you can type the summaries. Uh, so I just simply um, copy and paste uh, the instruction from our lab. So, okay, uh, you can also uh, provide the usage, so how to use this tool. Uh, you can also provide the more detail, like what does input feature mean? So that is the input feature to create buffer. Uh, and what is output feature? So that is a buffer. And so I just give a very basic brief uh, illustration. So what is distance? So that is size of the buffer. And what is a summarized feature? So that is date to be intersected. Okay, and also the field. So that is a field to be aggregated or uh, yeah you can <laughs> you can write a more a better explanation than me uh, you can also give it um, an image uh, you can provide credits uh, user limitations bounding boxes etc okay so let's save it okay and now if we open our toolbox, so now we have very nice toolbox. That's, you can see, uh, if we put the mouse to the question mark, it has uh, it explanations. And for each input, okay, so it has a very short introduction. Okay. Okay, so let's test out our tool. So this time we're going to use a different data set, so slightly different data set. So we have been using county, so let's use state population, not county population. So let's remove that one. Uh, and also we have used the entire mass routines. Uh, so this time, let's say we, we are going to use uh, the mass routines in Virginia only, okay? Uh, so let's extract the mass routines in Virginia only. So to do that, we can use an existing tool which is called select and now you can see they have very nice um, explanations okay so let's put the mass shooting as the input feature uh, for this output feature let's say we want to select the mass shootings in VA so the output will be mass shooting VA and expression will be that the state is equal to Virginia. 
copy and let's write. OK, uh, so now we have a subset data of the mass routine. So let's remove the mass routine data set. So we have mass routines in VA only, and we want to summarize, let's say, average population around those mass routines in VA and from those uh, state population data. So let's go back to our uh, catalog and let's double click this toolbox, this tool. Okay, and let's bring the VA as input feature. And you can see the output feature. So by default, it gave us mass shooting VA buffer as a default fee, uh, default result. So uh, let's change that a little bit. So let's say we call it test VA buffer. And the distance, let's still use 50 uh, kilometers. And for this uh, summary feature, okay, so let's use the state population instead. And uh, for this statistic field, let's also calculate um, the average population. But now the population is from the uh, state. Uh, let's calculate mean. OK. And now let's write. And we can also see the details. So now you can see uh, uh, the tool has been started. And we can see all the parameters that we brought to this tool. and. Also, we, we might have to be patient because for some reason, ArcGIS Pro has uh, been very slow recently. So now you can see now we are creating the buffers. And now the tool is creating, executing the intersect. And now it is executing the summary statistics. And now it is doing the join field. OK, uh, so now it, it is complete. And uh, because we have been testing on a subset of the data set, so we, we are testing the mass shooting in VA only. So uh, on my side, it took um, uh, three minutes, three and a half minutes. And we don't have any warnings or errors. That is nice. And now if we go back to the catalog, and actually, you can see that uh, by we already have those buffers that being added to uh, to the map. Okay, so if we uh, right click the attribute table, okay, and we should we will see that the on the very right side we can see that those are the average population uh, within each single buffer. And if we refresh our um, database okay and we can see that uh, the buffer has been created okay so yeah I gave it the wrong name it should be test v buffer okay uh,